Welcome back. Let's pick up our math model where we left off and help the city of Miami. As our atmosphere and oceans warm, warm water rises from ocean depths and causes glaciers to melt from the bottom, which is why... How does the average thickness of our glacier change over time? Move this handle all the way down on the graph to find out. You can also use your writing tool to annotate the graph. When you're ready to move on, press this button. Use the interactive graph to help you record the glacier's average thickness over the next 20 years in this table. Your points will be plotted automatically on this 2D graph. Do you see a pattern? If you wanted to predict the glacier's average thickness in the year 2045, what would you need to do to its average thickness in 2040? In five years, the glacier's thickness decreased by four meters. But how much did it decrease in just one year? Hmm. To figure this out, let's take this four meters and break it up into five equal pieces. So each piece represents how much the glacier melts in one year. Based on this, what do you think? By how many meters does the glacier's thickness decrease in a single year? Input your answer on the task station. In five years, the glacier's thickness decreased by four meters. But how much did it decrease in just one year? Hmm. To figure this out, let's take this four meters and break it up into five equal pieces. So each piece represents how much... just found out is called the slope. In our case, the slope represents the glacial melting rate each year and is equal to negative four-fifths because the average thickness of the glacier decreases by four meters every five years during our time period. This means that in one year, the thickness is decreasing one-fifth of four meters, which is just four-fifths of a meter. As you can see, the amount of change between each output is constant, whether we're looking at the glacier melting rate between year one and year two, or year four and year five, the rate of change or slope is always negative four-fifths. This means to get from one output to the next, we subtract four-fifths of a meter. That repeated addition is the same as multiplication, like this. The average thickness of the glacier changes by negative four-fifths in one year. How much does it change in three years? So where are we starting? 
In other words, what is the thickness of our glacier when time is equal to zero? You can use the interactive graph, table, or 2D graph to help you. This initial value is called the y-intercept, which represents the initial thickness of our glacier at time t equals zero. On a graph, we can find the y-intercept of a function by finding the point at which the function crosses the y-axis. I've updated your table to show how the glacier's thickness changes every one year. How can you write each thickness in terms of the slope, negative four-fifths, and the y-intercept, 4,500, using the operators on your keyboard? The first two have been done for you. It's your turn to do this for the remaining three years. You found that the glacier melts at a rate of negative four-fifths and has an initial thickness of 4,500 meters. Using these two pieces of information, can you create an equation that models the glacier's thickness over time The function you created is a linear function. Linear functions can be written in many forms, but the one you used is called slope-intercept form. y equals mx plus b. We call it slope-intercept form because its two key parameters are, you guessed it, slope and y-intercept. m is the slope, also known as the rate of change of the function, and b is the initial value, or y-intercept of the function. The slope represents the glacial melting rate, and the y-intercept represents the initial thickness of our glacier at time t equals zero. Because the standard form uses addition, we can write these terms as y equals negative four-fifths t plus 4,500, or reversed as y equals 4,500 plus negative four-fifths t. We can find the slope between any two points on a linear function or a line. For example, the thickness of the glacier decreased by four meters, over five years. That's negative four meters per five years. It's the same rate of change, negative four-fifths. So far, we've looked at the years between 2020 and 2040. It turns out that before 2020, the glacier was actually melting at a slower rate. Use the grip button. That's right. We can continue mapping back in time, which creates a graph like this, made of several pieces of linear functions, known as a piecewise function. In the 80s, the melting rate was 0.25 meters per year. In the 90s, about 0.5 meters per year. In the early 2000s, about 0.6 meters per year. The glacier melted at some constant rate over each of these time periods. Back to our mission. Our researchers have told us that we'll hit a dangerous sea level when our glacier's volume has decreased to 1,264 cubic kilometers, and its base area has shrunk to 285 square kilometers. Luckily, we know that a glacier's volume is equal to its base area times its thickness, and we just discovered how to predict the glacier's average thickness. Using the volume equation, Find the glacier's thickness when the volume and base area reach this critical point. You can use the solver tool or your calculator and writing tool to help you. Remember to account for units.
Nice job. Now, use this equation to solve for the time t when this will happen. You can use the solver tool or your calculator and writing tool to help you. Make sure you calculate the year that this t represents. Congratulations. I think we have a much better sense of the time frame for when Miami and other coastal cities are at risk of flooding. Thank you for all of your hard work in protecting important institutions like Roy's family business. Now, let's get us some Roy's famous clams. Look at everything you're now proficient in. You understand there is a complex relationship between human activities and glacial melting. But we can create a simple linear model using tables, graphs, and an equation to better understand how glaciers can change over time. You determined a line's slope, intercept, and equation, and connected it to something...